some more spooky places in some more spooky states. Who would have thought? I swear literally everywhere there is a place that is haunted and honestly it makes me want to go visit even more. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 real haunted places in California that are pure evil. Number 10. Satan's Castle San Bernardino Yes, this place is called Satan's Castle and it's a no from me. Satan's Castle sits on a mountainous region that is filled with both religious religious and satanic lore dating back to the 19th century. There are said to be underground tunnels linking to various points of interest across the mountain which were used during the Prohibition era. These tunnels were created mostly for transportation and smuggling booze but also served for darker purposes. One of these tunnels is rumored to connect a Catholic church to Satan's castle. It is said to have been the grounds for dark ritualistic practices which included both human and animal sacrifices sacrifices along with other dark ceremonies. Not to mention inside one of the rooms a pentagram used to be painted on the ground. Local Christians painted over it with the John 3.16 verse but the pentagram always bled through. Definitely sounds satanic to me and I will not be visiting there. Number 9. Preston Castle Ioni the Preston School of Industry, also known as Preston Castle, was a reform school that opened in June 1894 and was considered one of the oldest and best known reform schools in the United States. The boys there grew their own food, raised livestock, and learned farming trades. Additionally, there was a print shop, bakery, and cobbler shop where the boys could learn skills for self-preservation in the real world. The superintendent controlled the life inside the school and discipline was extreme. Starvation, isolation, and public paddling and lashings, and severe strategies were common at Preston. Now, this school has seen a lot of death. There are 17 men buried on the school grounds because they died there. Samuel Goines had his life ended after attempting to escape from the school. In 1950, Preston's head housekeeper, Anna Corbin, was beaten to death in the school's basement as well, and they never found out who did it. Employees and visitors believe that these young men are still haunting the school, which only closed in 1960, by the way. Those who have toured the grounds since have reported many strange sights and sounds, slamming doors, falling objects, disembodied voices, and ghostly physical contact. Number 8. Camp Pendleton, Area 41, San Diego Camp Pendleton is a coastal marine corps base with a dark history. This place is divided up into sections and Area 41 is haunted. Locks have been tampered with, furniture displaced, items gone missing, and strange noises are heard throughout the camp. Many think that this is done by one broken hearted marine in particular. This man was in love and had recently asked his girlfriend to marry him. After she had said yes, he thought his life was going great, but it didn't last long. The marine was in his housing unit when his fiance got a hold of him and told him that she was ending the relationship. He was so upset that he ended his life in a second story room of the barracks. Now, some marines are convinced his spirit remains in the area and haunts area 41 in particular. A general feeling of unease is common here and to this day, marines claim that they hear the faint sound of a man softly humming the Jeopardy game show theme song around the grounds. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Number 7. The Hotel de Coriando, San Diego Hotel de Coriando is a historic hotel that opened in 1888. Kate Morgan has haunted this hotel since 1892, the year she checked in and awaited the arrival of her husband. The two were traveling con artists and not surprisingly, her husband never showed up and four days later, Kate was found dead at the bottom of an outdoor staircase leading to the Coronado Beach. Today, those who check into Kate's room Room, which is now room 3312, have had spooky experiences to say the least. Curtains blowing even though the windows are closed, objects moved by unseen hands, murmuring sounds, and even sightings of Kate walking down the hallways and peering out the windows have all been reported. Her ghost is often seen both in the hotel and on the beach. Now room 3519, formerly room 3502, is also haunted. Once a maid's room, it's been the site of numerous paranormal occurrences occurrences such as objects moving around by themselves. Number 6. The Whaley House, San Diego 
The Whaley House is the oldest brick structure in Southern California and was the home of Thomas Whaley and his family. At various times, it also housed Whaley's General Store, San Diego's Second County Courthouse, and the first commercial theater in San Diego. The house has witnessed more history than any other building in the city, and it is extremely haunted. One of the most infamous ghosts there is the spirit of Yankee Jim Robinson. Yankee Jim was hanged in the gallows where the house now stands in 1852 after being convicted of stealing horses. Thomas Whaley himself, who owned and lived in the house with his family years later, said they could hear heavy footsteps going up and down the stairs. Now visitors have reported cold spots and the feeling of their chest and throat tightening within the home. Others claim to have seen Yankee Jim 2, an apparition that appears and disappears when you get too close. Today, and for many years, visitors to the house have also reported seeing Thomas. They usually see him wearing a frock coat and pantaloons standing on the second story landing. Others have seen his wife Anna, usually floating around in the garden or the downstairs room. Her ghost, which appears white and billowy, seems to just drift about and then disappears. Number 5. Winchester Mystery House San Jose Now after finding out what this place is, I really want to visit here. I mean just by the name Mystery House, it's cool. Now some backstory on the house, Sarah Winchester lived a tragic yet interesting life. She married William Wirt Winchester in 1862 who was a very wealthy man. Sadly though, her husband, mother, and father-in-law all passed away within the same year. To deal with her grief, she moved to California after gaining a large large inheritance from her husband. Then on top of all of that, Sarah was being haunted by the spirits of those whose lives were ended by the Winchester rifle which her husband's company had invented. After her husband passed away, a psychic told her to evade the spirits, she would need to move out west, buy a home, and build non-stop. She took 36 years to construct the home, and this house has 6 kitchens, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 17 chimneys, 160 rooms, and many doors and stairs that lead to nowhere. Workers and visitors swear they hear howling at night, loud creaking, and sometimes the kitchen smells like someone is actively cooking. But regardless if you believe in ghosts or not, the house is absolutely stunning. Number 4. Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, Los Angeles the Hollywood Roosevelt is considered to be one of the most haunted hotels in Los Angeles. It first opened its doors in 1927 and was a frequent home to Marilyn Monroe, who often stayed in the second floor cabana. Interestingly, the doors to this hotel are still open, allowing visitors to spend the night in Marilyn's suite, and some people claim to have seen Marilyn's ghost smiling and blowing kisses at them in their hotel mirrors. Hotel workers often talk about seeing the ghost of Charlie Chaplin and feel temperatures drop quickly quickly from one room to the next. The apparition of Montgomery Clift has been blamed for patting guests shoulders and watching maids in room 928 where he stayed for 3 months while filming from here to eternity. The ghost of Carol Lombard has also been spotted floating around the upper floors and in the Blossom Room where the first Oscars were held, two ghosts have been spotted, a presence of a tuxedoed man and a presence of a man in a white suit. Seems like if you want to meet a dead celebrity, the Roosevelt Hotel is the place to go. Number 3. Alcatraz San Francisco Bay The famous maximum security prison Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary earned a reputation as one of the most brutal and inhumane prisons in the country during its day. The strong currents around the island and cold water temperatures made escape nearly impossible and the prison became one of the most notorious in American history. The prison closed in 1963 and the island is now a major tourist attraction. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 escape attempts, 23 were caught alive, 6 had their lives ended by guards during their escape, 2 drowned, and 5 are listed as missing and presumed drowned. Now, During its 29 years in use, Alcatraz held some of the most notorious American criminals, including Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Bumpty Johnson. Today, it's a tourist attraction that many believe to be haunted. Inexplicable events happen like the sound of someone playing the banjo. Many believe this to be the spirit of Al Capone who spent his last days at the prison playing a banjo in the shower room to avoid being injured in the yard. The smell of smoke, the sounds of cell doors slamming, disembodied voices, moaning, and screams have also all been reported. Number 2. Queen Mary, Long Beach 
Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. She sailed to the port of Long Beach, California, where she is permanently docked. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction, featuring restaurants, a museum, and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. There are resident spirits, including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter, who was crushed by a watertight door, senior second officer William Eric Stark, who accidentally drank dry cleaning fluid instead of gin, and the cook, who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But most arguably, the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is room B340. Reports claim someone was knocking on the door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turning on by themselves, the sink faucet turning on and off on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. There are even more stories about this place, but I don't have enough time to fit them all in. If you're really interested in Queen Mary, I say do some homework on it because it definitely gets creepier. And coming in at number one is the Cecil Hotel, Los Angeles. The Cecil Hotel opened in 1925 as a well furnished hostelry frequented by respectable people, but that didn't last long. As downtown became more and more dangerous, the Cecil became a place where bad people stayed, like the Night Stalker aka Richard Ramirez and Austrian killer Jack Underweger spent time there. The Black Dahlia was rumored to have had her last drink at the hotel bar before she turned up dead a few miles away. In 1962, Pauline Otten jumped from the ninth floor window, ending her life. That same year, Julia Moore jumped from an eighth floor window. and. And Helen Green from the seventh floor in 1954. The Cecil Hotel may have rebranded itself recently as the Stay on Main, but it just can't shake its reputation as a place where scary things happen. In 2013, the body of Canadian tourist Elisa Lamb was found in the hotel's rooftop cistern. Her body was discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. And yes, people had been showering in and drinking that water. Ugh. And last but not least, the ghost of a boy has reportedly been photographed outside a fourth floor window. Spooky. <laughs> Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 real haunted places in California that are pure evil. These places don't seem too scary. I think I would visit any of them. Would you want to visit any of these places? Let us know in the comments down below and make sure to like and subscribe while you're down there. I'm your host, Emily, and I'll see you next time. Peace.